Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon EOS R5 and R6 video training series. This series is focused on the video specific features of these cameras and in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the R5 and its various recording options, so let's go. Before we jump into the topic for this video, I want to make sure that you set up your camera properly for movie or video recording. So let's just go ahead and jump into that. For the R5, we're going to go to the top right of the camera and we're going to press the mode button. And then we're going to get this menu here. The camera is currently in stills mode. So I'm going to go down here to info and we're gonna switch it over to movie or video mode. And you can see it did that. Now there are a lot of options here on the screen. I'm gonna choose manual because that's gonna give me the most control in terms of ISO, shutter speed, and also aperture. But the nice thing is even though I'm in manual, I can set the camera to auto ISO if I want to. And I can of course take advantage of the autofocus system and all of those features. So now that your camera is set up for shooting video, it's time to jump into this video's topic, which is the recording options in the R5. There are a lot of recording options inside of the R5, and the purpose here is to help you sort those out. So what I'm gonna do is go into the menu system, and the first menu on the R5 is the shoot menu, and there's eight pages in there, the four pages that we're gonna be dealing with are one, two, three, and four. And then the only other place that we're really gonna be going to in this video is page one and page two of the setup menu. So let's go back over here to start with in the shoot menu. And we're gonna take a look here at page one. And this is where most of the choices that you're making regarding your resolution, frame rate, and format are made but there's still a lot to really understand here. So what I'm gonna do is take this one step at a time to make it very clear in terms of what those choices are and what they mean to you and your recordings. So you'll see here on the first page that we have movie record quality, we have movie cropping, and we have sound recording. And if we go into this particular submenu, you'll see that there are three choices. We have movie record size, we have high frame rate. Again, we'll cover that in a little while, and we'll also cover the 4K HQ mode in a little while. Let's jump into movie record size. And right now, what we're taking a look at is the video system set to NTSC. So if we go back over to the setup menu, and in that first page, choose video system NTSC, these are the choices that we're gonna see here. If we switch that menu over to PAL for the video system, you'll now see the options that are available to us inside of this menu when we have the camera set to PAL. Of course, the big difference that we're gonna see when we are in PAL versus NTSC are the frame rates. So here we are again looking at NTSC for our movie record size. So we have three rows inside of this menu. The first one has to do with your resolution. The second one is your frame rate options. And the third one has to do with choices in regards to the format that you're recording in. So let's go over to the first choice, 8KD, which stands for DCI or Digital Cinema Initiative. And this is a 17 by nine aspect ratio capture used oftentimes for cinema-based applications in terms of that aspect ratio. It's 8192 by 4320. And the frame rate that you're seeing there at the top is based on choices that you make in the second row. And then where you see standard IPB, that's coming from the third row. If you look over to the right hand side, you'll see a total record time. And what that's telling us is if we had the camera set to an 8KD resolution, and we were recording at 23.98 frames per second, and we were recording using standard IPB or long gop group of pictures recording, we would get on the card I'm recording to two hours and 15 minutes and 24 seconds of record time. That's how much the card can actually hold. Now I have a card here, which is a CF Express card. This is inside of slot one of the camera system, and it's a 512 gigabyte card which is corresponding to, because this is a newly formatted card, 
to the record time that they can get off of that. The second card slot inside of this camera is an SD card slot, and I have a V90 class card inside of here, and that's a 256 gigabyte card. If I switched my camera system, which I'm gonna do right now, over to that, so I'm gonna go over to the Q menu, and you can see I can quickly switch over here to my recording and playback to card number two. So if I now go back into the menu and take a look at 8KD and I'm recording at the same frame rate and the same format, you can see that on that SD card, which is half the size, I'm getting an hour and seven minutes of total record time that's available onto that card. Now, if I step down here to the third row and we go over to and choose raw recording, you will see that we have zero time that is available to us on that card. And what it's telling me is, even though this is a formatted SD card, that it cannot record to that particular card. I'm gonna step out again and you'll see that we get a warning on the screen that's telling me that. And I'm gonna go into the Q menu and set this back to my CF Express card and we'll just go into the menu again and now with the camera set to 8KD RAW, I can record on that 512 gigabyte card, 24 minutes and 19 seconds of content. That doesn't mean that you can record all of that content to the card. It's just total capacity having to do with this resolution, frame rate, and format. You do have to manage the temperature in this camera and you may get less recording time than that based on your resolution, your frame rate, and the format that you're recording to. So when you're recording in 8KD RAW, you should know that that's a 12-bit linear recording inside of the camera system. So it is going to be the most information that you can possibly capture from the R5 when recording with the camera. So in addition to only being able to record 8K RAW to the CF Express cards, there are a few other choices you can make which also can only be recorded to a CF Express card. And those are 8K All I, and then your high frame rate options when you are recording either 119 frames per second in NTSC or in 100 frames per second in PAL. Just as a note here, when you're recording in your high speed recording modes, we are recording in camera that 119.9 frames per second to 29.97 frames per second in camera. And for PAL recording, that 100 frames per second is being conformed in camera to 25 frames per second. So now that we have the CF Express card selected again, we can record in any resolution, frame rate, or format that the camera can handle. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and disable our high frame rate recording and go back into our movie record size. And let's take a look at the information that we have here right now. We are in 4KD, so 17 by nine aspect ratio, 59.9 for all I. If I take my first row and I go over to 8K, let's just say UHD, you will see that it's still set in the second row to 59.94. And in the top right, you'll see that it says total record time, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Why is that? Well, it's not an available recording option with 8KU. We can't do 59.94, so I'm gonna have to go down to that row and I'm gonna have to choose one of the available frame rates that are available to me. I'll choose 23.98. And then I'm gonna go down here, and this would also apply if I had had RAW selected. I would have to go and choose something other than RAW when I'm in 8KU. So I'm gonna choose, let's just say IPB, and set OK, and now we can see a total record time there. So that is a little bit of a gotcha, but when you see a zeroed out time there when you are changing some of your settings, it generally means that you had something selected that is now no longer compatible with the options that you have for that resolution. So you just need to change those things. And as I said before, it could also mean that you cannot record to that particular media, in this case, in this camera, the SDXC card.
Now, regardless of what your resolution frame rate or your format is that's inside of this menu, if we step out and we go back up to our setup menu, I do want to show you one other option, which is in the first page, which is under record function plus card slash folder select. If I go inside of here and I scroll down here to my record options for movie record options, and I go in, we will see that there is a selection here at the bottom, which is to card one, which is CF Express, I can record 8K RAW, and to card two, I can record an MP4 file. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that actually means when we go back over to our first page of the shoot menu into movie record quality. And you'll see that when I choose that selection, that all of those other options that we had before disappear. We don't have those other options for resolutions and for frame rates. Now, of course, when you set your record options back to standard and you back out and you go back over to your movie record quality options and movie record size, we have all of those other recording options available to us again inside of the camera system. And you can then select them based on how you want to shoot with the camera. All right, so let's go over to 4KU. And as you can see, those are our frame rates that are available to us. So I'm going to go down to the second row. I'm going to choose 23.98. And then in this last row, we have All I and IPB. We haven't really talked about this too much. Now, All I is all intra frames. So every frame that's captured at your frame rate is a full picture. Just think of it like you're capturing 24 or 30 JPEG images per second. And if you looked at each one of those images, there would be a full picture. When we choose IPB, it is what we call a long gop or long group of pictures type of recording, where the first frame generally of a group of frames is a full picture. Then we have what are called predictive frames. And those frames predict basically what should be in that image when it gets put back together. And then you have bi-directional frames. And they're looking at the frames before and after. And they're just putting all of this data together so that when everything's compressed and then decompressed, it reconstructs those images. Now, the advantage to all I is that you have all of those individual pictures. And if you have a screaming fast system that is tuned to video, you may have some benefit recording in all I. The downside is file size. It's much bigger, so you're going to be taking up more space on your cards, more space on your hard drives. And sometimes, because a lot of modern NLEs are GPU or graphics processor unit tuned, as opposed to CPU or central processing unit tuned, it can actually be an advantage to record in IPB. It's a very efficient type of recording. And as long as your NLE can handle that, then I have actually found from my experience that sometimes it's better to record in IPB than all I. I recommend you do tests at the resolutions and the frame rates you record with within the camera and with the NLEs you're using to see which is gonna be the best type of compression for your workflow in post-production. Okay, let's step out of this menu now that we've sorted out that matrix of recording options. And as I mentioned before, we have high frame rate options, which we've already discussed. There's gonna be another video in this series that is going to deal with high frame rate recording specifically. And then we have our 4K HQ mode. Now, the thing to understand about 4K HQ is when we enable this and we're looking at our NTSC options right now, we now see under movie record size that we only have two resolutions that are available to us. We have 4K D and 4K UHD. And then we can choose two frame rates. We can choose 23.98 or 29.97, depending on your delivery requirements. And also we have all I or IPB, which we just discussed, and those are your choices. Why would we choose this mode inside of the camera? Why do we choose 4K HQ mode? Well, if you want the best quality recording, what we're doing when we choose this is we are enabling an oversampled recording from the 8K 
sensor of the camera system. So we should get the best quality. The thing to remember about this is that because you are oversampling from that 8K sensor, you do have to be aware of heat management and you will not be able to record for as long as you can when you're recording in, let's say, 4KD or 4KU standard recording as opposed to this HQ or fine mode. So now I'm gonna set up this camera for the way that I'm gonna probably shoot with it in most situations, which is I'm gonna go over here and choose 4K UHD 16 by nine aspect ratio. I'm normally shooting at 23.98 frames per second and I'm gonna shoot in IPB. That's gonna be my preferred way personally to shoot video most of the time inside of this camera. So I'm gonna set okay. Now we're gonna step out and go back to the beginning or the first part of page one of shoot. And we're gonna talk about movie cropping. And this option here may be advantageous for people who want a little bit more reach from their lenses or they want to simulate an APS-C or super 35 millimeter field of view. If you do attach a Canon EFS lens, it will automatically detect and go into this crop mode. But essentially what you're doing is when you enable this and we take a look at our image, you can see that APS-C field of view. And when I go back here and into my movie record quality and my movie record size options, you will see that with cropping, we lose our 8K resolutions inside of the camera. So this can be applied to 4KD, 4KU, and full HD recording. And then again, if we disable that feature and we go back, you can see that full frame field of view again from the camera. We've covered a lot of data already, but we need to go down one more rabbit hole to really understand what's happening when you are recording with the camera. And when we make some of the choices we're about to make, there will be some additional changes to those recordings. So let's go back into the menu. And what I wanna do is go over here to page three. And in page three, you can see picture style. If you've shot with Canon cameras in the past, whether it's a DSLR or it's a mirrorless camera, you're probably familiar with this particular menu. And in fact, if you are shooting with a lot of the cameras that Canon has made in the past, then you may be familiar with going into something like the neutral picture style and going in and making some changes where you reduce your contrast, you might take down your saturation a little bit inside of the camera. And what this is gonna do is give you a little bit more dynamic range from your blacks to your whites when you're recording in there. But the thing to understand is regardless of your resolution and your frame rate and your format, except for when you're recording in 8K RAW, anytime you have the camera set up this way, you're using these picture styles when you are recording your image and you are recording an image that is 8-bit 420. So the only way we can switch that over in terms of our bit depth and also our color sampling inside of the camera, except for of course when you're recording RAW, which is very different, is to go over to page two of our shoot menus and either choose HDRPQ or page three and choose Canon Log. And anytime we select one or the other, they cannot be selected together, we are now going to be recording in 10-bit 422 internally to the cards on the camera. So let's talk about HDRPQ first. This is really, in my opinion, a future-proofing option inside of the camera. If we enable this, as I said before, we will now be recording 10-bit 422. And we do have some options here where we can have a lookup table that is essentially giving us a view of a graded image after it's been treated in post-production. And you can either have your exposure priority or your tone priority. Generally, if I were using HDRPQ, I would choose highlights. And then 
Again, when you're playing back in camera, you can also have an assist or a lookup table that is being applied. And I would choose highlights because I want to make sure that I'm seeing if those are being protected once we have the adjusted image. Now, HDRPQ for me really has to do with a requested workflow. You're gonna need to have the right type of monitor to monitor that correctly. They do not come inexpensively. And again, in my opinion, this is really a future proofing option in the camera. Feel free to experiment with it. And if you like the results of what you're getting when recording in HDRPQ, by all means do that. But I think that for most people, and especially when you want to get the most dynamic range out of the camera, it's Canon Log that you want to choose. So we're going to go in here to the third page of the shoot menu. We're going to turn Canon Log on. Again, HDRPQ and Canon Log cannot be on at the same time, and you will get a warning if you try to do that. And then once it's on, we'll see all of the options that are available to us inside of this menu. Now, View Assist is exactly what we were talking about for HDRPQ. It is just a lookup table. So we can see here that we have the log image and how flat it is. And this is giving us the most dynamic range we can get out of the camera right now. And if we apply View Assist, it's not being pushed to an external monitor. So it's something that you're going to see here on your monitor on the screen. So I'm going to go back in here and I'll turn View Assist off. And you can see here that we're now looking at a log image on our screen. And then again, going back into the menu and log settings, view assist on, and we can now see that LUDed image. That is not what's being recorded. It's just giving you an approximation of what this is going to look like when you apply a LUT or you grade the image in post to a Rec. 709 space and also dynamic range. And that is a narrower dynamic range than what we are actually recording with log. So back inside of here, a couple of other things to take a look at in our Canon log settings. So now we're gonna go down to color matrix. So we have two options inside of here. We have neutral and Cinema EOS original. Cinema EOS original is going to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of the colors and the way they're saturated. Neutral is going to be a little bit more true to life. If you choose Cinema EOS Original, you will see that the last option inside of this menu, color space, is grayed out and it only says BT709, which means that the gamut that we're recording in will be narrower and smaller than if we switch this back over to neutral. And then we can actually choose between that narrower triangle of a color gamut, or we can choose 2020, which is a larger gamut, which will give you more to work with in post production. It doesn't mean that choosing 2020 is always the right choice. For a lot of people who know that they're going to be delivering to the majority of screens with the 709 gamut right now, which is most of them this might actually be the best option in terms of your choices. If you know you have a production where you're using the R5 along with other cinema EOS cameras like the C300 Mark III or the C500 Mark II, you may want to choose this bigger gamut and space so that when you're working with that footage, it more closely matches some of the choices that you may be choosing in those cameras but those cameras will also allow you to choose 709 as your gamut or color space as well. So it really depends on the production and what you're working on. So here we have another option, which are characteristics when we are talking about Canon Log, and they have to do with sharpness, strength, saturation, and hue. These are not things that I would generally do in camera. By all means, experiment with them. And if you want to add a little bit of sharpening in camera, you like the way the camera feels less or more saturated, you want to shift the hue of the camera, then you can do that here. But again, for me personally, I would leave those at zeroed out and deal with that in post-production. So just a couple of other little tips here. I would step out if you're shooting in Canon Log and go over to Shoot 4, the fourth page of the Shoot menu. Go into Lens Aberration Correction and turn off Peripheral Illumination Correction. 
and that will actually help because sometimes if you have that on, you can run into some noise in the edges of the image when you're recording in Canon Log. One last thing I wanna mention about Canon Log, which is my preferred way to shoot with the camera, and that has to do with ISO. And I would set your ISO to 400 or above when you're recording in Canon Log to make sure you're protecting those highlights in your recorded image. When you're recording in HDRPQ or Canon Log, the bit rate or file size is going to change. So for instance, when you're recording in 4K UHD at 23.98 frames per second in IPB, that when HDRPQ or Canon Log is off, you're recording at a bit rate of 120 megabits per second, but when either of them are on for that resolution, that frame rate, and that format, it jumps to 170 megabits per second. And that makes a lot of sense because we're going from 8-bit 420 to 10-bit 422. So having that extra data rate is definitely gonna help you in post-production when you're dealing with that captured image. So there you have it. That is an overview of the recording options in the Canon EOS R5, and hopefully that will help you with your productions when using the camera. The goal is always education, so I hope you learned something here, and thanks for watching.